So, let's talk about Kelly King. Sydney, I actually don't know why I opened with that. Uh, she's Sydney, in the game, Sydney. Sydney is a perky Australian gangster of 24 years of age who somehow schlepped her way into the U.S. and took a big backpack full of money from the Payday Gang. Bane, in his eternal wisdom, saw this one. yeah, let's put her in the crew. And so it was done. Sydney came to us with the Anarchist Perk Deck, a very unique assault rifle, the Butterfly Knife, as in, I guess, well, you know what, that's correct, the one and only, and a face that some might call controversial. But how does all this work as a build? It's time we figure it all out. So let's start by talking about Anarchist, our perk. Anarchists don't regenerate all their armor at once. They pick up a little bit after a certain interval, though the amount recovered and the timer are both dependent on the amount of armor you wear. Heavier armor typically recovers more per second, though you're waiting a lot longer for it to kick in than you would wait for lighter armor. Additionally, dealing damage grants you 30 armor once every second and a half. Lastly, you lose 115 health, but you gain it back as about 138 armor. This makes Anarchists good for two things. Frenzy builds in which you cut your health to a low amount to get big returns on your damage, or Joker builds in which Partners in Crime offers you almost 80 more armor points while you have a convert. Anarchist is a very flexible deck, and with a primary that's very self-sufficient and efficient, one can rock the higher difficulties without much skill investment. We have a lot of options. Just kidding, the bootleg rifle, it isn't terrible, though I'll put it this way. The JP-36 might carry 70 less rounds per magazine without skills or perks, but it's got 40 more rounds in total, it fires a little bit faster, it's more accurate and more stable, does a bit more damage, reloads quicker, it picks up more ammo, I don't know. This is a gun I really don't personally like. And if that's not enough, the JP-36 can take a speed pull mag, whereas with the Beta C on the bootleg, that 4.7 seconds is all you're getting without skill investment. And you also unlock the JP-36 sooner. And it's cheaper. Alright, less talk, more... more talk. The bootleg rifle is based on the Heckler & Coach 416C, based heavily on the M4 and its 50,000 million variants. It's heavily used alongside the M4 in the military, and it's the star player in the French and Norwegian armed forces. Australia also happens to really like this thing for whatever reason. For mine, I've gone ahead and slapped on an AML barrel, the Bootstrap Compensator, or the Competitor's Compensator if you're not a fan of aesthetics, an Accuracy Boost, an LED Combo, a Pro or Rubber Grip, a Minus One Sight, and the War Torn Stock. We're good to go. This puts the stability at 100 and the accuracy at about 60. And that's really all we can do to the gun, bump up the accuracy and stability to fun enough levels. Now, our secondary was originally going to be one from an adjacent update, but the last weapons added before Sydney were the Akimbo Compact 5s and Krinkovs, and the following weapons were from the Rust Packs. So that's no good. I also considered grabbing an Australian military weapon for this build, which would be neat seeing how the Aussie military uses the HK416. But that would leave us with a Compact 5, which isn't terribly exciting, or the Interceptor 45. We're technically the locomotive, which just is giving me deja vu, but... No, I went ahead and I played a dumb card here, and I looked around the Sydney safe for inspiration. Fun fact, the Sydney safe doesn't even contain a skin for the bootleg rifle. One of the biggest things holding this plan back is the rarity of the safe and the resulting price of the cosmetics. The Sydney safe was the last safe in the game to take a $2.50 drill. It was added to the game in update 99, and update 100 retired the safe, pulling it from the drop system after 11 f***ing days. This makes even the most common of skins cost an arm and a leg, and you really don't want to know how much some of these more rare things go for, it's... it's sad. But I do own three of the skins from the safe. We've got the GL40, the GSPS, and the Baby Deagle. I've already talked on and on about the Ithaca, the GL40 is another primary weapon, so let's give the Baby Deagle a shot. Based on the Jericho, whatever, whatever, yada yada yada, Bodhi Character Pack link goes here. I've given mine the Threaded Barrel, Ipsic Compensator, a Concealment Boost, Micro Laser, the Spike Grip, and the Spike Kit. The Spike stuff works out about an accuracy plus 4 for the cost of 1 concealment, but it overhauls how the gun looks, and it's a lot better having this stuff. The Compensator pushes us to 100 accuracy, which lets us hit down range, and the Concealment Boost gets people writing upset comments during the video only to either stop when I call them out right in the middle of the video, or make them feel guilty about having hit send and try to edit the comment to something a bit more tactful. I caught somebody with that, hopefully, otherwise I just wasted a bunch of time for something only I care about. Which I guess you could argue is the spirit of this whole channel. The Wing! 
a neat melee, if only for its swing animation. It's nice and graceful, but otherwise it's kind of slow, low damage melee that we have too many of. The Light Ballistic Vest is my armor of choice. It bumps up our armor value from 205 to 270 when compared to the suit with the right armor skills. And it regenerates only a second slower, but with an equal ratio of armor given compared to the suit. Molotovs are my throwable. They leave a nice sea of flames and come on. What type of punk rock rebel wouldn't stick some gas in a beer bottle, top it with a rag, and chuck it at the man to send a message? A poser. That's who. And now we get to our skills. I'm going to go over my core skills and then offer a couple different alterations you can make here or there to fit your needs. I have aced combat medic for two doctor bags, aced partners in crime for some bonus health and armor if the long guide's any indication. This should give me a lot of armor. Aced die hard, transporter, and bullseye with basic iron man to get the most out of my armor. Aced steady grip, lock and load, and body expertise with basic sure fire and fire control to keep the bootleg on target as much as possible with bonus body shot boons to battle the distant but enemies. Basic shockproof to prevent us from being tased a little too often. And aced gun nut, nine lives, and bloodthirst round out this build with some mixed bag of things. Now, if you want Inspire, you can take back everything in the controller subtree and grab the aced version, and you've got four points to spare to go pretty much anywhere. Or if you take those points and say Transporter Aced and Underdog Basic, you can then invest into Berserker and Frenzy Aced to beef up your damage even further. But I figured I'd want more health from partners in crime to counteract the biggest downside to Anarchist. Snipers render a tough, stoic wall of attitude into a soft little baby who needs to be kept indoors. Like that really dumb cat in your neighborhood who just keeps get he keeps getting out, and then the parents are like, Where did he go? I don't know. Keep an eye on your kitty cat. Buffoons. Anarchist is super susceptible to burst damage attacks, and the snipers in this game are one of the few enemies who can do health damage even if you have armor on you when you're shot. As it currently stands, we have 115 health and 270.4 armor, with a convert that brings Sydney up to 149.5 health, and if we jam that into the formula found in the perk decks subsection of the long guide, we should have 220.8 base armor, which puts the light ballistic vest in this state up to 353.2. Without any armor skills, this puts the suit up to 240 armor in case you're wondering. But this is all just words. 1,375 to be exact, if by the end of the sentence I filed my script word for word. And okay, I haven't, so it's like 1,500 maybe. Ooh. We just don't want words, we want gameplay. So how does all this play? It plays quite alright, given the circumstances. Convert a guy and you're suddenly a lot more bullet resistant. That said, still be a bit wary of snipers, partners in crime helps, but only so much, and while it can soften the blow of some amounts of burst damage, its biggest boon is lessening a horde's damage further. Sydney is best in a crowd surrounded by enemies where you can just empty the bootleg's magazine into 10, 20 faces at once. And at longer ranges, we more or less just need to aim in the general direction of enemies to do borderline headshot damage. The Baby Deagle's best course of action is to handle everyone we can't hit, or just don't want to hit with the bootleg or just act as a handy justice dispenser for when the bootleg starts running low on bullets. It works! Is this build any good? Not particularly. The JP36 and the freaking AM car are more capable weapons. Which just means these skills are better spent on a weapon like the Union 556 or the KSP. Something a bit more accurate or more powerful if not both. Anarchist isn't the problem. I love the perk deck and its flexibility is amazing. The wing isn't the problem. It sucks, but the, so does so many of the melees in the game. Sydney herself isn't the problem, unless you ate fun. It really is the bootleg that weighs down this whole build, and a lot of it is its restriction to the Beta C magazine only. The Beta C, as it appears in-game, was originally meant for all of the car-type weapons, if old beta files are any indication, and they offered 100 rounds on those, but probably reloaded slower or less accurate, something like that. This, though, was gutted for the sake of not breaking the weapon scripts. They're not programmed to override animations based on weapon mods, with the only real exception, air quotes, being the little friend, which is actually programmed like two different weapons that you just switch between by pressing like the 4 button. While the Beta C mag was partially realized on the car weapons in the form of the quad stacked mag, which included about double the bullets, the Beta C magazine would only see the light of day through the bootleg. By giving the weapon what was at the time an LMG-sized magazine, they tried to keep its balance around the LMGs at the time, with low damage to make up for its bar barrage of bullets, and low accuracy and stability to emphasize spraying and praying. 
The LMGs got a huge damage boost in update 168, which left this thing kind of in the dust. Honestly, as a build, this is pretty good with like a Clarion or maybe some Akimbo weapons. But as a Sydney experience, it's a lot less breakneck pace and frenetic energy and a lot more slow and dreary. Less job in the city and more long, lonely night. Less walking illusion, more room to breathe. My final verdict on the Sydney pack is that it hits the mark in its perk deck and its character. For me, at least. It's melee is a payday melee, whatever, but the gun is just too much of a burden to make this build any fun. That said, the pack was still a good addition, and if you can find a different assault rifle, this is a lot of fun. There's a lot of fun to be had, and I had a lot of fun making this video, and I learned a lot making this video, and I hope you did too. And until next time, see ya ra Just please, for the love of God, just use the Union 556. Hey, I'm interrupting my self-promotional end slate talk real quick about new infinity um it was this thing i started in 2014 to 2017 the easiest way to describe it is that it's it's a young adult novel and also a techno lot like a sci-fi novel but in the modern age just kind of like that um i wrote it between 2014 i finished it in the november of 2017 uh, the other day, uh, Friday, Thursday, THURSDAY! Thursday, I started New Infinity, Disc 2. It's a continuation of New Infinity, the link to New Infinity 1 through the story sharing site Panana. It's always been in the description, you can find it there, and you can check out my other written works on my Panana page. Can we bring up the, uh, the end slate things, just kind of boom, boom, boom. And I'm gonna shut up and let the, the pre-recorded end slate reel kind of take it away from here. Take it away, me from several months ago. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, I'd recommend subscribing. Patreon and social media links are in the description.